this is really significant and people need to pay attention to this. What we're seeing here is that a certain body of facts or opinions is being banned from public space. That they are really outrageous as an assault on all sorts of freedoms. Not just one freedom, but several freedoms. There's something about shouting chants and passers-by staring that make it so empowering. But it's not just harmless fun. The point of a protest is to make your opinion publicly heard and influence others. So what are the rules that govern it? And is there a moral compass? I'm going to be meeting some influential protesters to help me understand if you can be immorally empowered. First, I want to meet Callan Rayfield, the deputy leader of the Women's Equality Party in Richmond, who have been protesting for a buffer zone around the local abortion clinic. Yes, so ours used to have pictures of fetuses, but they went a while ago because there was an altercation with a member of the public who took them and folded them in half and put them in a bin, and then he was arrested. So anyway, that doesn't happen anymore. So the signs that they have are, they've got quotes from Jesus, quotes from the Pope. Like, you have to be quiet. You have to sit quietly. Can you manage that? Do this. Look at the buses. Um, so they have posters on the street with quotes from biblical quotes, quotes from the Pope, and some pictures of Mary. Um, but if you engage with them, they will offer you medical support. They'll talk to you about getting breast cancer if you have an abortion. They'll show you pictures of this is what an aborted fetus looks like on their phones. So one, I mean, they say they don't do that, but our clients and staff members say that they do. So it's very difficult to... I mean, yes, it's difficult to sit here now and say this is definitely what happens. But those are what our client, the clients of the clinic have been saying to us. The words they use are they call them murderers. They call them mummy, which, and it, that doesn't sound too offensive. But when you're dealing with potentially having to go through an abortion, I think that's pretty emotive language that's unnecessary. It just feels so fundamentally wrong to me that when you're dealing with possibly the hardest, most difficult decision of your life, that somebody who's never met you before, who's never who has no idea of your background or your justification or your reasons or anything, your history, is allowed to say things to you like you're a murderer. My friend was told that Jesus loved her baby even if she didn't. And she's, and she's a practicing Catholic. She's, she had all of the religious guilt as well. So being somebody suggesting that this was a baby that she should love and that she might be killing it was just really hard. It was just awful. And I think... It's a legally provided healthcare service. You have the right to access your healthcare anonymously and with dignity, and they're stripping away all of those things when you walk through the door and they approach you with a leaflet with incorrect medical information that's frightening and disturbing and, and presenting it as fact. And then you still have to deal with this huge emotional trauma. Do you think there is like an appropriate safe way for pro people to express it? I think it's really tricky. It depends what you think they're really there for. So if you are, if you're under the impression that they're protesting against abortion, then, and that, that that's a protest against the very fact of abortion, then yes, they should be doing that, but in the places where laws are made. So outside the council offices, if they don't like the fact that the clinic's even open in Richmond Council, Hello. or outside the Houses of Parliament, if they really want to change the law, that's the correct place for a protest. And that's what we see every day. Yes, there's the duck. Can I read you this in a minute? Um, so, uh, but then what they say, what our protesters say, is that really they're bearing witness for the babies and that they, the, only, the only place that can be done is outside the clinic. Where do you think the line between people exercising their right to protest and like making sure that they're not hurting other people? I think that's a really difficult question. I think it's a really difficult question because 
the I fully support, and it's enshrined in our law, the freedom of expression, the freedom to, to congregate I think, and to protest. I think those are really important. But the wording of the legislation includes a phrase about not being allowed to exercise those rights at the expense of somebody else's human rights. And I think that's, that's the line that we're at um, outside our abortion clinics because that behaviour is harassing to the people that are entering the clinic. They don't need to go through that. There are other places that are more appropriate for people to express their, their thoughts on abortion. I agreed with what she was saying, but I didn't know if this was because it appealed to my already existing opinions. So I spoke to Rachel Kringle, an experienced organiser of protests, and what she thought on the matter. So it's a difficult one, and there are actually a lot of reproductive justice activists who don't support it, who would rather say, they can protest, we will counter-protest. Um, the reason why I did come down on the side of like supporting what Sister Support are trying to do, it's not about what they're protesting for, it's about where they're protesting. Um, because your right to freedom of speech surely ends at, in the doorway to my doctor's clinic. you know. Um, and we already have public space protection orders, and so far they are used to protect you know, the ruling classes. So for putting, putting one in place to sort of stop. The, and like, the only thing you can see of potentially being a problem from setting a precedent that outside a medical clinic is not an okay to protest would perhaps be medical professionals picketing. Um, but there are ways around that, and I don't think that many medical professionals <laughs> would object to having to move further away from a hospital if it meant that vulnerable women aren't going to be harassed. Um, in terms of, like, should people be able to protest about any subject? Well, of course. But they should expect, you know, there to be a movement there to stop them. I was still yet to talk to someone who protests outside abortion clinics, so I arranged to Skype with Dave Brennan, director of Breathless, a pro-life organisation which works with churches. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm going to try and find a, uh, a good angle for this. Is that is the light and sound and everything okay there? Yeah, it sounds and looks good. There's been obviously accusations of staff at abortion clinics and patients feeling intimidated by the protesters. What do you kind of have to say about that? Well, it's important to draw the distinction between something someone feeling intimidated and someone um, actually being the victim of harassment. Now, I, I might feel intimidated by all sorts of things. Walking down the street, I might um, look at someone and feel intimidated by them. They, that doesn't mean they're being violent. Um, and so if we were out on the streets saying, people rise up, burn down abortion clinics, and impale pro-choice MPs on stage, that would be incitement to civil unrest and violence. And, and if someone wanted to arrest me for those things, I would, um, I would, I would, I would uh, well understand it, because these are... Um, uh, what I'd be encouraging people to do is unlawful things and violent things. And so we absolutely must be careful um, about that kind of speech. I, I assume you're aware of like the buffer zones that have been implemented at Ealing and to be implemented in Richmond. What do you think yeah. about those? Well, I have to say, I think the, the buffer zones are um, that they are really outrageous as an assault on all sorts of freedoms. Um, mm -hmm. Not just one freedom, but several freedoms. They're, assault on, they're an assault on um, freedom of, of expressive rights and, and freedom to, to gather and to put, put across information or an opinion. As I say, what we're doing is not giving an opinion, but other groups might. Um, but that's a human right. In, in, a, in a free democracy, we have we have expressive rights, and that's pretty really important. Um, and, and really, it's the thin end of the wedge. It, it's quite a, a historic moment, really, for the UK that they allowed this to pass. And then also, as you say, Richmond recently, yeah. uh, the decision yeah. was made in favour of buffer zones. This is really significant, and people need to pay attention to this. What we're seeing here is that a certain body of facts or opinions is being banned from public space um, and that's, that's a big move. It's really outrageous that people who claim to be pro-choice are in favour of these buffer zones because mm -hmm. these buffer zones are removing choice from women. It's very important also to draw the distinction between our message and our code of conduct. And I can, I can show anyone our code of conduct on the streets. We are very professional. We don't move from the spot, for example, where we stand. Uh, we only engage people who want to be engaged. We don't chase after people. We don't shout at people. 
uh, none of that stuff. We, we stand there showing the truth of abortion and we engage individuals who are willing in discussion about it. So, um, so our, our behavior is not intimidating. Our behavior is not harassment. Uh, but our message and the truth of abortion is upsetting because what we're doing is we're showing a society that it is complicit in the largest genocide in human history. 56 million, it depends on your estimates, between 42 and 56 million babies are killed through abortion every year worldwide. That's Historically, that blows every other genocide out of the water. Um, and people may find them upsetting, but, but it's important for the right functioning of a, of a free society. I had come into this with some quite strong opinions of my own, but it was really interesting to hear many different perspectives, some I was familiar with and some I'd never been exposed to before, and really understand the true moral issues around protest. Thank you.